Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 20th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to take another dive. This is uh, part three into a recent scientific paper talking about tipping points that could lead to a hothouse state and how rapidly we are approaching those tipping points, primarily through fossil fuel burning. And in this segment, we're going to focus on responses to human-caused climate change as identified by the paper. Now, before I go into the responses, I'd just like to say that the present tra trajectory is one in which we cross various planetary thresholds and enter a state where various hothouse earth states are locked in and that and this and the intensity of these hothouse earth states is based on how much is, is based directly on how much carbon humans emit as initial as an initial forcing and by how rapidly and how strongly the earth system feedbacks over short medium and long-term periods now the avoidance of such hothouse states has been identified by this paper as an earth stewardship pathway. And the paper notes that in order to achieve an earth stewardship pathway, the human system has to move from a carbon emitting system and a system that produces a, a feed, a, a, a forcing for human caused climate change to a system that produces a negative feedback to warming in the climate system. And the steps, the, the, the potential steps that this paper identifies are, one, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And, I, and in order to do that, you need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in all honesty to net zero or net negative. Otherwise, you're contributing over, over long time scales so long as, as the human system is, is a, a positive or, or a net positive greenhouse gas emitter. The second is enhancing or creating carbon sinks in such a way that, that draws carbon down from the Earth's atmosphere and from the Earth's ocean system such that, that you end up with, with a situation where, where humans are, are pushing into net carbon negative. So, so you cut carbon emissions to zero and then, then ideally you want to push into net negative. Now, the negative impacts from these choices are generally very low and the positive impacts from these choices are generally very high for example if you transition to renewable energy and and a in a clean energy system in which energy use produces zero carbon emissions you're producing a much better society overall because you're not dealing with pollution impacts to human health pollution impacts to water, you're not dealing with uh, as much in the way of wealth concentration issues that result in unequal societies, you're not dealing as much with, with energy systems that produce a resource curse type situation. So the net positive impact of transitioning to renewable energy is, is vast. And so not just for dealing with climate change, but Dealing with climate change is, is a major reason to support clean energy. Now, a, another aspect of reducing human ca carbon emissions and transitioning to net zero or net negative carbon emissions is land management. And this, is, this can be broken down into changing the way we produce food through sustainable agriculture and changing the way in which we manage forests such that we work to preserve forests and preserve forests that are healthy and forest environments that that are enhanced carbon sinks and so so these are these these i guess three choices transitioning to clean energy transition transitioning to stable carbon and transitioning to a, a positive form of land management are all aspects of responding to climate change that produce multiple positive benefits and practically zero negative impacts. 
Now, going beyond that, there are options for, for responding to climate change that, that are a bit more risky. And, and the, the, the lower risk options that, that, that still involve some, some, some risk involve direct carbon capture of carbon from the atmosphere, which, you know, one is, is, is high cost. So that, that's the primary reason for, for, for that risk. But, but that, that may be necessary. But, but the, if you're looking at higher risk options, and, and this is, we're starting to get into number three, which is modifying the Earth's energy balance. And, and this can be very risky. Primarily, it focuses on solar radiation management. And solar radiation management involves pumping a, a, a large amount of reflective particles into the upper atmosphere of the Earth, thereby reflecting some sunlight back, which results in less sunlight getting into the lower atmosphere and interacting with the higher levels of, of carbon dioxide, and thereby keeping the Earth a bit cooler. Now this is very risky because it changes temperature and weather patterns across the globe and it changes the Earth's energy imbalance in such a way that many scientific studies have identified a potential very serious impact to the growing productivity of certain regions of the world such that it can be a very hard hit on Earth's agriculture and enhance dryness in certain regions such that that in in many cases scientific studies have indicated that billions of people could be negatively negatively impacted so you mess around with the radiation balance of the earth's surface of, of, of sunlight hitting the earth and and try and change that in order to mitigate climate change and there are certain serious risks now this is often described for good reason as, as, as a potential last ditch effort to, to keep the Earth system cool, to prevent entering a hothouse state. And, and if, if the movement toward a hothouse state is rapid or extreme, un unfortunately we might need to look at, at the potential for managing solar radiation at the Earth's surface, but this is an unpalatable response in, in that it's kind of like chemotherapy for, for the Earth's system. It's, it's, it results in serious negative, potential negative impacts that, that could be almost as bad as entering a hothouse state. So, so when you're looking at negative feedback actions by human beings, the, the low-hanging fruit and, and the, the, the responses that are most positive involve transitioning away from fossil fuel burning and transitioning to more sustainable farming and land management practices with, with a more extreme response coming from uh, kind of a Frankenstein modification of, of sunlight coming in and hitting the Earth's surface. So, so just a, a broad analysis of, of the, the recent implications as indicated by the scientific paper entitled Trajectories of the Earth System in the Anthropocene. I encourage you to read this paper, but as you do, I, I, I want you please to think about the urgency of our present situation and the urgency of supporting rapid carbon emissions reductions and changes to land management practices now so, so we don't get so far down the feedback process toward a hothouse state that, that we, we start making less wise decisions. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.